A series of well-established, time-tested instructions are followed when bonding strain gauges. These include surface preparation, gauge handling, bonding with an adhesive, and attaching lead wires. But to determine if the gauge is bonded properly, first a visual inspection can be done to see if the gauge conforms well to the flat or curved surface of a component on which it is bonded. A fillet formed by the adhesive along the edge of the gauge would be a very desirable feature as seen here. This would ensure proper anchoring of the gauge to the surface. A change of color inside the grid area would indicate variation in the adhesive thickness or uneven curing of the adhesive. There should be no air bubbles under the gauge which would easily be seen or detected under strong light. Dust particles trapped under the gauge during bonding will severely affect the gauge performance and such gauges should be replaced. The solder joints should be smooth and rounded. Sharp peaks or excessive solder should be avoided. This can be corrected by retouching the solder joints with a solder pencil and some additional flux. Small gauges should be connected by thin flexible wires with a minimum amount of solder. Precision strain gauges such as those from micro measurements have a tight tolerance on the resistance and this should be checked for the bonded gauge. For this, a model 1300 gauge installation tester made by micro measurements is used. It can measure the percentage deviation of the gauge's resistance from the specified value and also the insulation resistance between the gauge and the body of the component. It has a set of terminals to connect to the gauge and a ground terminal that can be attached to the body of the component with a spring clip. With this additional connection, the 1300 measures the insulation resistance between the gauge and the component. For a good gauge installation, this should be as high as possible, preferably more than 10,000 mega ohms. For the gauge resistance check, the 1300 has two percentage deviation scales, 5% and 1% full scale. Properly bonded gauges would show a minimal deviation of their resistance, normally within the specified tolerance for the particular gauge. Example, for a micro measurements type CEA gauge, the resistance tolerance is 0.3 percent. In this test, the 1 percent range is selected and we see a deviation of less than 0.1 percent. For checking the insulation resistance between the gauge and the test specimen, the mega ohm button is selected. Here we get a reading of more than 10,000 mega ohms. The ultimate test for the quality of a good gauge bonding is during an actual test. When connected to a good strain measuring instrument such as the model P3 from micro measurements, a strain gauge should show a steady zero under no load condition that does not change with time. When the component is heavily loaded, a stable unwavering reading for the high strain level should be seen, which again should not change with time, indicating that the adhesive is holding the gauge firmly to the specimen's surface. It is equally important that when the load is removed, a full return to zero is achieved. This will be a good confirmation of the high quality of the gauge bonding.